The first step in the penetration testing process is planning and reconnaissance. Banner grabbing is a reconnaissance technique that retrieves a software's banner information. This banner usually contains important information about a network service, including but not limited to, its software name and version. FTP, Web, SSH, and SMTP servers often expose vital information about the software they are running in their banner. Once the software name, version, and possibly other information has been gathered, it can be used to find vulnerabilities. A simple CVE search on the software information can give a malicious actor, or pen tester, the information they need to compromise a service. Only use these tools and techniques on systems whose owners have given express permission and consent for penetration testing activities, such as those described within this article. We do not condone any illegal or malicious activity. Before we get started, please support Putorius by subscribing and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. A banner attack usually starts off with an enumeration scan to find open ports. Once you identified a service you want to target, you can send specific packets and inspect the traffic for the specified information. Let's take a look at how to launch a banner grabbing attack, and a few different tools that can be used. One of the most common tools used for banner grabbing is Telnet. It is widely available and very easy to use. Telnet is an old, insecure communication protocol. Because of this, modern Linux systems may not include this package by default. You can easily install it using most common package managers. SSH Secure Shell is the most popular method for remote administration of Linux systems. As you may know, SSH is an encrypted communication protocol. However, there is an exchange of clear text information before SSH creates the encrypted tunnel. This begins with a handshake. TCP, IP connections begin with a three-way handshake. Your client sends a SYN, the server responds with a SYN, ACK and then finally your client sends the ACK. After the handshake, some services will respond with information about what software and protocol it is using. This is known as its banner. Now we will use our Telnet client to capture information about the remote SSH server. Simply type Telnet on the command line and you will drop to the Telnet prompt. Telnet is now waiting for commands. Type open, followed by the IP address or host name of the remote system, and the port number. In this case we are using SSH so we use port 22. Here we can see that the server is using SSH protocol 2.0. We also discovered that it is running the OpenSSH server version 7.4. Now that we have this information, we can use the CVE database to look up its vulnerabilities. A malicious user can use this information to attack the service. Conversely, a system administrator can use this information to secure their services by patching the software against these vulnerabilities. The information provided will differ from server to server. Below we see Ubuntu not only offers the protocol and software version in use, it also provides information on the operating system. You can perform banner grabbing on other services as well. Previously we demonstrated how to use it on the SSH service. Let's try something different. On our Ubuntu development server we have a SMTP server configured. We can use the same technique to gather information about this service. Our SMTP server uses TLS, so the port is 587 rather than the default 25. By using our banner grabbing technique we can discover the host name, the service information, and the operating system. There are plenty of tools that can be used for banner grabbing. Let's take a look at some of the more approachable and widely available utilities. Nmap is another widely used tool for banner grabbing. It is not as easy to use as Telnet, and it sometimes requires elevated privileges to use. In this example, the minus PN option tells Nmap to ignore discovery, and the minus SV option asks for service and version information. These options are followed by the target IP address and minus P to specify the port. 
In this case we used port 22 for SSH, but it can be used for other services. Here we can see Nmap was able to retrieve the software and version information. Nmap can be used on many different services. Here is an example of banner grabbing with Nmap on a web server. Here we see Nmap discovered the software name, version and operating system used for our web server. Netcat, also known as NCAT, is a utility that can read and write data using both TCP and UDP. It is a very powerful troubleshooting tool, which in turn, makes it a powerful exploration tool. Using a single option allows you to easily pull the software banner. Here we invoke NCAT with the minus V option to initiate the communication and grab the service information. We can see that the protocol and software versions were printed in the output. Just like the other tools, NCAT can be used on many services. Here is an example using NCAT to get information about a web server. NCAT was able to retrieve the server information and operating system from the web server. The wget utility is a command line tool designed for non-interactive download of files from the internet. Using the minus Q option we can suppress the normal output. The minus S option tells wget to print the headers sent by the server. Since wget was designed to fetch files from the internet it is restricted in use to certain protocols. You can use wget for web and FTP servers, but you cannot use it for other services like SSH and SMTP. Banner grabbing is one of the easiest and most common reconnaissance techniques. There are many tools and scripts that allow you to get this information. In this tutorial we covered using basic Linux utilities like wget, ncat and telnet for banner grabbing. Telnet is by far the easiest to use and almost always readily available. However, there are also specialized infosec utilities like Dimitri and ASR. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more please support Putorius by liking the video, subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published.